Hey everybody, it's Maggie Bot with Vlogus Day 18, and today we're going to talk about La Grande, huh? Um I had this whole idea to talk about gaming and gaming budgets, and uh, the more I talked, the more it sounded like I was whining, and I just didn't want to do it tonight. So, I will try and find a better way to present gaming and gaming budgets and how to maintain them in a future vlog, but tonight we'll just talk about La Grande, huh? So. Um, any of you that follow me on Twitter know that I'm going back and forth, back and forth about the Grand Hot. This is a title from last year. It came out with Essen from Spielworks. And then this year, it got a printing from Stronghold Games, which, um, just so y'all know, I know that it was already printed, but I'm in the American camp where I didn't buy it from Essen. I definitely had an opportunity to play it, but I did not take up that opportunity more than just a simple demo until um, the recent U.S. printing came out. So, no need for snarky comments. I know. I could have played it before. Um, it's just... I'll, I'll be honest, some of the fun is taken out of a game when you try it and there's no one to talk to about it. And if I had played it for all this time, there's no one here that I would be able to speak with very much about it, especially not in a strategic way, which in these types of games, it's much more fun for me to talk about strategies and things that went well and things that didn't from people who have known and have played the game. So, um, La Granja is a two to four player, uh, lovingly referred to as Agrica Luna, from those of us who have played too much Feld and too much Rosenberg. Uh, so Agrica Luna, or Agranha, um, you are trying to build up your little farm market thing. So here you have your little farm, and on it you can raise some pigs, you can raise some crops, you can sell your stuff, and you can um, hire some dudes. I'm not sure how they would justify the, the bottom part of it, but each card has a kind of layout. Uh, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but... So, be ready <laughs> So, each card has, along the top, a contract that it might be. Along the side, it might have some fields. On the other side, it might have some income, some deliveries, some pigsties. And in the middle, you have some writing here and ability. And the way that this works is that each player will have their card out in front of them. And depending on where they put the card, it might do different things. So if you slide it along the bottom, it might be an ability. If you do it along the side, it might be income and stuff. So each card can be used one of four different ways. Um, you decide that when you play the card and it can't be converted otherwise. So my first impression of this game, my very first full playthrough, not demo, but full playthrough, was that I was going to get really annoyed with the massive number of cards because as you can see, there are quite a few of them. And each of them has an ability, and I thought, oh god, it's going to be one of those games. Just kind of like basic Agricola, where if you just, you know, cycle through, cycle through, cycle through, till you find those two or three amazing cards, um, it'd be game over for everyone else. And the more I've played this game, the less I've been concerned about that. And the more I'm convinced that the cards are lovely, they're nice, you kind of want one, but you can't go out of your way to look for crazy amounts of cards. They're not that good. They're handy, but not broken. So the abilities are not such where you would sacrifice anything to get them. It's very rare that you don't have to think about how you would like to use the cards. Um, most of the abilities are somewhat handy. The contracts are somewhat handy and nothing's really out of reach. Each round is um, played over bloop, bloop, and little cards here. Doo -doo. Uh, each round you kind of play through from one to four and they just, the card is lovely. It reminds you that everybody's gonna play a card and then draw back up to their hand size. There's a little bit of income. Then your fields produce and your dudes or your pigs breed. Um, so you go from the top to the bottom of the card, and you continue doing, doing that through sixth rounds. And at the sixth round, you do kind of a little bit of in-game scoring, and then most points wins. You're going to earn most of your points over the course of the game. They're little chits, but they're also used as a resource in the game. So if I needed to be, build some extra income spots, I can pay victory points toward that. 
Um, the other nice thing, as you can see here in your middle board, you have these crates that convert to resources. And you have your basic resources and your pigs, and then you can convert them to more complicated things. Pigs turn into ham, um, olives turn into food, and all those things, the olives, the food, all of this stuff can be purchased with cash. So you can build engines that get you massive amounts of resources or engines that give you cash, give you victory points. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on and that's just your player board. Um, the other part of this, and this is why the Luna comparison that everyone, everyone will make, and Luna comes out later this year and you need it. You need it more than La Granja. Let me, there, there's your review right there. This middle part of the board, this is the market stalls. And when you complete contracts, the top part of your card, um, it will give you a space on that market stall. So this is a two market stall card. And you will put one of your markers out. And if that marker is placed next to a marker of lesser value, so if my five goes next to your three, I kick your three out of there and I get a victory point for doing so. Uh, it's a wonderful mechanic. You also get points each round for however many pegs you still have out on the board. Sorry, camera spazzed out a little bit. Um, the, the market stalls in this game are directly taken from Luna. It is identical to the temple, um, the way that you place everything. And yes, I'm going to get some people talking about the books and Luna, but in general, I'm sorry, it's identical is the wrong word is very, very similar to the temple in Luna, which is good, it's a good thing. Um, you also get the sombrero track, which is how you determine turn order, you get a little bit of victory points for it, and it's very similar to, I, I don't know what people call it in their playgroups, but Feld uses a specific type of track. Uh, we call it the Doge track, just like in Rialto, it was called the Doge track, but he also had the wall in Macau, and he, he uses the same sort of track where you have to expend resources, he used this in Luna too, to move up the track, and those same resources are going to get you either initiative in turn order, they're gonna give you tie breaks, they're gonna give you all sorts of things. And so the sombrero track in this one is nice. It's a resetting track, so as you go up each round, you're gonna score some points, but at the end of the round, you're gonna go back. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many mechanics in this game, it's kind of silly to try and talk about all of them, but what I will say is that after my initial play, I was definitely pleasantly surprised by how mild the player powers are and how not combo-y they are. They're just nice bonuses, and the game itself is very well crafted. I'm looking forward to really digging in. This is the reason I purchased it, because so many of my friends do own it. Um, it's just a matter of having it available to me all the time and getting it on the table whenever I can uh, as opposed to getting it on the table whenever we don't have something else that took precedence and that a lot of the time owning a game for us will give us a little more flexibility of when we can play it. Um, also, in, in a year from now, I could see myself still playing this, so I think it's going to be a good purchase, and I do think it will probably have a permanent spot in my library. Even though it is very similar to other games, it's not so similar that it has identical feel to it, which is really, really nice. Um, as far as strategy tips go, I've not played it enough to really know. I know that there is a big pig strategy that I've seen work pretty well where you build every sty you can find and get all the pigs in the world and then find uses for them. But that's not always good because one thing I didn't really talk about, ha, last, last thing, ha, ha. Um, So out here on the board, boop, boop, you have these uh, craft buildings and they're where you can deliver some of your goods rather than delivering them to a contract. But at the beginning of the game, three of those crafts buildings are going to be not available until someone unlocks them. So if your pigs or your basic ingredients or your money ones are, uh, are locked down, it's, it, you just can't always build the exact same engine. You have to deal with what's on the board, which is a, another nice point to this game. Um, so La Granja, Stronghold Games, they've really done a good job in picking this one to bring over 
I look forward to a bunch more plays of it and um, I will let you know what I think if we could get maybe a strategy 101 kind of video going. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.